The Pixel 6 and the Pixel 6 Pro are finally here, and Google isn't playing any games. These are the flagships the company has wanted to build for years, and this is now actually possible thanks to the realization of its very own chip called Tensor. We've seen already a lot of pictures and videos from Google circulating on the internet, but now that we finally have devices to play with and have full specs to share with you, we can tell you more about these devices. The highlight here is the cameras for the Pixel 6s. Not only did they get a processing boost thanks to Tensor, but these are also some serious hardware upgrades. There's also nice things like faster screens and Pixel-exclusive Android 12 features, as well as big voice recognition improvements. But arguably the best thing about the Pixel 6s is, is the starting price. Today, you can pre-order the Pixel 6 for $599 and the Pixel 6 Pro for $899. And they'll be available on shelves on October 28th. That's a really low price for the Pixel 6. And with that, you're getting a 6.4 inch full HD screen that can go up to 90 Hertz. It also has a 50 megapixel main rear camera and a 12 megapixel wide sensor, while the selfie camera is eight megapixels. Now for $300 more, the Pixel 6 Pro offers a sharper 6.7 inch screen that goes up to 120 Hertz and has narrower bezels. The Pro also has an additional 48 megapixel telephoto camera with four times optical zoom, while its selfie camera is wider and sharper at 11.1 megapixels. The other main differences between the Pixel 6 and Pixel 6 Pro are that the latter has a larger battery and comes with 12 gigs of RAM, while the smaller phone has 8 gigs. Oh, and only the Pro goes up to 512 gigs of storage and has an ultra wideband chip for ranging and spatial orientation. Pretty much every other feature is shared by the two flagships. They're both powered by Google's new Tensor chip, which by the way, is an octa-core system with two big, two medium, and four small CPU cores. They also both have in-display fingerprint sensors, IP68 ingress protection ratings, support sub-6 and millimeter wave 5G, et cetera, et cetera. One small area they differ is in design. So right off the bat, these phones feel so different from the Pixel 5. If you're used to that, this is no longer a phone that's kind of plasticky almost. These are glass covered, premium feeling things. They're also much larger than older Pixels. The Pixel 6 Pro feels almost like a Galaxy Note and it's just as big and hard to use one hand, but it's a lot lighter than the Apple iPhone 13 Pro and Pro Max. The Pixel 6, like I said, has noticeably thicker bezels than the Pro, and its edges have a matte finish compared to the more premium phone's shinier sides. They also come in a different trio of colors each, and the Pixel 6 arguably has the better palette. I'm a fan of the minty blue option, and the blush version is also nice. Meanwhile, the Pro only has one fun shade that's kind of yellowish, and not everyone's going to love it. The other two Pro colors are silver and black. They also both run this lovely, beautiful new Android 12 that has some features that are exclusive to the Pixels. One of the first things that is obvious on the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro is Material U, which is something that took a really long time to roll out to the Android 12 public version. If you've followed along with our coverage of Android 12, you'll know that Material U basically is an adaptive UI scheme that takes the primary color elements of your home screen's wallpaper and then applies that throughout the system so you get colorful and yet matching hues for things like your keyboard, your menu buttons, your, your settings shade, your notifications panel. When Google introduced Tensor earlier this year, it also promised big things were coming in areas like voice recognition and camera processing. Now that I've had some time to play with the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro, I can tell you my impressions off the bat are that they're truly intriguing. So first of all, the speech recognition software has undergone a major revamp to really improve it. Google will be better not only at recognizing what you're saying, but also at trying to suggest alternatives that might make more sense for you. For example, you have a friend whose name is Brian, and when you're using your voice to send a message that mentions their name, they might use the wrong spelling of that. 
Say you fix that and choose a version with an I instead of Y, the next time you say Brian's name again in a voice dictated message, Assistant will know which one you mean and suggest that first. You can also insert emoji by saying smiling face emoji and Google will actually insert the symbol for you. Another cool thing that uh, the Pixel 6s will be able to do is that system-wide they can actually do better live translation of different languages. So for example, if you're using WhatsApp and you're messaging a friend whose native language might be Chinese or Japanese, you can type in English and the system will simultaneously translate and just send your message in Japanese to your friend. There's new updates coming to assistance call screening and hold for me and wait time features as well. But here's a caveat, we can't show you any of this in action just yet. So really, instead of telling you, I wanna show you and you'll kinda of have to wait till we review the Pixel 6 for, for all of that evaluation and information. The other area that the Pixel 6 and 6 Pros have gotten a serious improvement and what I'm truly excited about are the cameras. Now we're at a point in the smartphone camera game where basically across the board, quality is about the same. We're using similar hardware, regardless of whether it's an 108 megapixel sharp sensor or a 12 megapixel one. So where Google should be able to stand out is with special features. And that's what the Pixel 6 and 6 Pro can do. None of these are brand new to the smartphone world, of course. We've seen them before with Magic Eraser. You can take a photo and if there's a stray garbage can in the background, you can select it and Google can erase it for you. With motion mode, there are two things here. One is a long exposure setting that lets you shoot moving cars at night or anything with lights really, and have those streaks of light appear on the screen. You can also shoot a waterfall, for example. Based on the demos I've seen, this feature is actually pretty impressive, especially compared to those from older Huawei phones. The other new feature in motion mode is action pan. Basically, if you have a fast running subject, like a dog prancing through a field or a bike zooming right by you, you can actually get a photo of that person or the animal in focus while the rest of the background has a motion blur effect. Once again, this isn't a brand new feature in the world of smartphones. We've seen Sony do it with the Xperia 1 Mark II before. So it'll be interesting to see what Google might be bringing to the table that's new here. With the Pixel 6 launch, Google is also officially introducing its image equity program. We've heard a little bit about this with other products like Google's Meet hardware, where the company is undertaking the effort to really account for different levels of melanin and different skin tones in people and then exposing for them. There's a few other features that are not super new to us, like a face unblur thing that'll keep your face sharp, uh, as well as portrait mode, night sight, and super res zoom that we're all already familiar with. As for video, the rear cameras are capable of shooting 4K resolution at 60 FPS, while the front cameras can shoot at 4K up to 30 FPS. Unfortunately, we weren't able to show you any examples of all of these, so you really have to stay tuned for our full review for the detailed impressions and breakdown. The one question people keep asking me about the Pixel 6 is whether that camera bump is ugly, whether it gets in the way of you know laying flush on the table, and I can say so far, you don't have to worry that much about that. What strikes me as the most interesting thing about the 6 and 6 Pro so far is their price. For $600 and $900, you're getting flagship level phones that seem to rival the likes of Samsung and Apple's flagships that cost about $1,000 to start. If that doesn't have you seriously considering a Pixel phone this year, I honestly don't know what else will, and I really wish you would give them a chance. But of course, as always is the case, I encourage you to wait for our full review for things like battery testing, real world performance, before you spend any money on these things. For that coverage and more reviews out of the consumer technology world, make sure you subscribe to Engadget. And as always, thank you for watching.